Microsoft Project is a powerful tool in the hands of an experienced project manager, but it can be overwhelming for beginners. Even intermediate users often find that they've only just scratched the surface of its capabilities. To truly get the hang of the tool, it's helpful to just play around with it a little bit, to set up some small practice projects and do some experiments with the functions. Or you can get one of the many books or take a detailed course on the topic. The next best thing is a short video designed to show you in a matter of minutes how you can unleash some of the simple but powerful capabilities of Project that will help you for years. Well, that's this video. And in just a few minutes, you'll know how to improve the scheduling in your projects significantly. Microsoft Project offers two very distinct approaches to scheduling tasks, auto-scheduling and manual scheduling. Auto-scheduling is like setting your project on autopilot. Using this, Microsoft Project automatically adjusts the start and finish dates of your tasks based on dependencies, calendars, and other criteria. It's dynamic and responsive. If a task is delayed, dependent tasks will be automatically rescheduled accordingly. That's great if you just want your project plan to reflect the real life circumstances and impact of the many changes and adjustments that are gonna take place throughout the lifespan of the project. Manual scheduling puts the control back into your hands. Tasks won't shift around unless you explicitly decide to move them. This can be helpful when you're in the early steps of planning and you're trying to figure out the details without tasks moving around by themselves. It's also helpful if you're preparing to present a schedule and you just want everything to stay where you put it. And finally, it can be very helpful when you're working from a schedule that's been created somewhere else and you're just transferring it into Microsoft Project. Microsoft Project offers many ways to switch between manual and auto scheduling. You can select the option you like per task in the task mode column. You can do it by right clicking the task and selecting the option you'd like. You can open the task information, in this case by double clicking the task and switching between the options in the general tab. In the task panel, you can choose the option you like and you can select from the mode dropdown which sets all new tasks that are created to auto or manual schedule. Let's fix an error. These tasks have been linked by a dependency with the second task called Work Package 2 set to start as soon as the first task ends. But these are manually scheduled tasks. You can tell because of these icons in the task mode column and the color of the taskbar itself. Manually scheduling gives the user great control over the project dates, but in my opinion, tends to be more useful when you're working from known fixed dates that will not move. But it can lead to some problems. For example, here it starts work package two during a non-working day. Why? Because it's manual and we told it to do that. We can tell there's a problem with the second task because the dotted line around the taskbar. If we right click, we see a few options that will resolve the problem. I'll click the fix in task inspector option. The task inspector notifies us of the problems here. So I go back to the task, right click and select switch to auto scheduled. This pushes the second task to the next working day before it commences and removes the warning. Now the taskbar color has changed and so has the icon in the task mode. You may have noticed that the ability to create dependencies between tasks that reflect the changes to task duration is one of the big benefits of Microsoft Project over tools like Excel. But we have so many more powerful features that impact on the relationships between tasks. For example, we can set a task to start at the same time as one of its predecessors, a linked task from earlier in the sequence. We open up task information, go to predecessors, from the list of tasks available, we only have one option available here, Work Package 1. We go to the Type column and select Start to Start, press OK, and there you see the tasks now start on the same date. You may have noticed a few other options in the Type column. Selecting Finish to Start means our task will start immediately after the predecessor finishes. Selecting Finish to Finish will set the task to finish on the same date as its predecessor, no matter when the tasks start. That can be really helpful when you need multiple pieces of work to complete at the same time. Selecting start to finish will have the task always complete immediately before the predecessor starts. That's great, but you may not want the tasks to be immediately triggered in relation to the predecessor. You may want it to start a few days earlier or a few days later. That's where lag comes in. Located next to the type column in the predecessor tab of task information, you can add positive or negative values to set the task to start or finish exactly where you want in relation to the predecessor. In this example, I used a finish to start relationship where our task starts as soon as the predecessor finishes, but I've now added two days of lag. 
you'll see the outcome of this. The predecessor finishes, then two working days later, the second task starts. Note how this appears in the predecessor column. Three FS plus two days, meaning the task is dependent on the task in line three. FS means that it's a finish to start relationship and plus two days means there are two days of lag. When you get used to seeing these relationships and working with them in this way, you may find it gets much quicker to just directly enter the details here rather than clicking to open the task information window. In this example, I've set lag to minus two days and you'll see now that the task is due to start two days before the end of the predecessor. Let's take another look at another powerful feature to enable greater precision of your tasks. Constraints. Open the task information window again by double clicking the task you're working on, but this time select the advanced tab. Here we can see the constraint type selection. By default, it's set to as soon as possible. We can select a variety of options from this list, but the ones I'd urge you to focus on are the bottom six options, which are driven by dates. This includes finish no earlier than, finish no later than, must finish on, must start on, start no earlier than, and start no later than. In this example, I'm selecting must finish on and then setting a date from the constraint date options. This will mean that no matter what, the task must finish on that date. Straight away, the planning wizard, cool name, appears with a warning to tell us that because the task is linked to other tasks, we could have scheduling conflicts either now or in the future. It gives us a chance to remove the constraint, to change it to another more flexible option, or to continue with the existing constraint. And that's the option I'm choosing. The task's dates are changed accordingly. These features will provide you with so much more precision in how you work with your Microsoft Project tasks, with all being easily accessible. But if this seems like it's way too much and you'd like to do something a little simpler, then check out this video where I see what Excel is capable of giving us. It's less powerful, but it's much simpler, more people have access to it, and it may just be what you need. So take a look and judge for yourself.